Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to this virtual graduation ceremony hosted by the University of Cape Town. This event will be available for viewing on UCT's YouTube channel, on the UCT graduation webpage, and on the UCT LinkedIn and Facebook platforms. 
Graduation is a very important event in the university calendar. It marks the accomplishment of years of hard work, often under very difficult circumstances. It is a celebration of the sacrifices made by every student, as well as their families and other supporters. In any other year, you would be receiving your certificates in a capping and hooding ceremony in the Sarah Bartman Hall. But as we have all experienced, 2020 has not been a normal year. Unfortunately, the risks associated with COVID-19 continue to prevail. And our primary focus has to be the health and the well-being of our graduates, their families and UCT staff members. And hence, this virtual graduation ceremony. As graduates of our esteemed institution, you represent the standard of excellence for which UCT is well known. The educational path you have traveled whilst at UCT is only the start of your onward journey. We are proud of you and we have great expectations of you as you proceed to become leaders of the future in the many professions and walks of life. The Chancellor, Dr. Precious Molloy Motsepi, will now constitute this virtual gathering, a congregation of the University of Cape Town, where after the Cape Town Youth Choir will perform the South African National Anthem, followed by the President of the Student Representative Council, Declan Dyer, who will read the University Declaration. By virtue of the authority conferred upon me, I constitute this assembly a congregation of the University of Cape Town. Hello, my name is Declan Dyer, the newly elected Student Representative Council President, and I'll be reading the University Declaration. At this time of celebration, we, the members of the University of Cape Town, reaffirm our mission to nurture rational and creative thought and free inquiry, to strive for excellence in teaching and research, to educate for life, and to address the challenges of our society. We undertake to advance these ideals in a spirit of freedom and responsibility and through consultation and debate. 
We celebrate our benefactors and predecessors, those who have built the fabric and nourished the values of UCT. To those of you who will graduate today, we wish courage, wisdom, and purpose. To those of you who will leave the university to learn and work elsewhere, may be sustained by those values which unite us here today and advance them in the world beyond. A love of truth and of learning, and of this, our university. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Mamukheti Paking. Hello, Dumelang Sanbonani Molweni. It is important that we do not let COVID-19 rob us of the opportunity to honor you, members of the University of Cape Town, for what you have accomplished in building the scholarship and reputation of South Africa. Each of you has accomplished something that will leave a lasting mark on our society, as well as your own lives. Your accomplishment will have a ripple effect on those who come after you, because none of us really stand alone. We are members of a family, of a community, of a circle of friends who influence each other. Even those of you who are only starting your professional lives will have a positive effect on your home communities and the sectors where you will work and lead. I also give a special welcome to the family members in attendance. Without the sacrifice and support of our loved ones, many of us would not be celebrating graduation today. Chancellor, it is my honor today to present to you Professor James Midgley, who is being awarded with a doctorate in literature honoris causa from the University of Cape Town. Vice-Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the award of the degree of Doctor of Literature honoris causa, James Midgley. I have no special talent. I'm only passionately curious, said Albert Einstein. Being curious, according to Harvard Business Review, is vital to deep decision-making, to creativity, to innovation, even to individual happiness. And although companies might say they value inquisitive minds, most stifle curiosity, fearing it will increase risk and inefficiency. James Midgley is the quintessential curious thinker. Curiosity on its own is important, but not enough. And James Midgley is not just curious. He is also highly innovative and exceptionally productive. His journey from Seapoint Boys High to the illustrious University of California, Berkeley via London and Louisiana has been driven by curiosity and translated into innovation and big picture thinking. After studying social work and sociology at UCT, his first social work cases were eye-opening. The narrow casework training approach was clearly inadequate in the face of deeper systemic problems of poverty, abuse, and deprivation. His big picture thinking was activated and he left casework thinking that he could make a better contribution in academia. It was at the London School of Economics that he discovered a radically different perspective, the social policy approach. The idea that it was more effective to drain the swamp of human needs through social policy intervention than to pull people out of the swamp one by one through social casework. This was revolutionary thinking at the time and involved conceptualizing and creating a new program with new materials and, oh, a new textbook, the first of many, which has since been widely adopted. From there, he moved to Louisiana State University, where he was struck by another need for new thinking. Social policies needed to be linked to economic development, and this, of course, led to another few textbooks and seminal works. Berkeley was next, with more big picture thinking and a few more textbooks articulating the social development approach. Although he's now technically retired, he has just published a new text and is working on another. His wife wonders why he doesn't just sit on the strip and enjoy his retirement, but he's having far too much fun, thinking, writing, having big ideas and translating them into frameworks. In fact, doing what he's been doing his whole life and for which he has received well-earned accolades. 
He has been described as the most prolific and influential scholar from Africa in the field of social policy, an outstanding scholar whose work has had enormous impact, not only in academia, but also in public policy. A special journal in his honor stated that he has indisputably shaped social development as a field of scholarship. His works are used as critical references for universities across the globe, and his thinking and research have helped to shape policy positions adopted by governments worldwide. He's been widely honored, including two honorary doctorates for his distinguished contributions to scholarship, as well as numerous academic and professional awards. James Midgley, we honor you for your determination and ambition, your humanity and interest in people, especially the poor, and your unflagging interest in translating your research into improving lives. We honor you for the way that you've harnessed your curiosity to profoundly influence your field and to bring good into the world. Vice Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the award of the degree of Doctor of Literature, Honoris Causa, James Midgley. Thank you for these kind words, Professor Lewis. Allow me to say how profoundly grateful I am to the university for honoring me in this way. I'd like to give special thanks to Professor Noyu of the Department of Social Development for nominating me. I'm truly grateful. This is a very poignant moment for me because it was almost half a century ago, in December 1971 to be exact, that I received my Doctor of Philosophy degree from UCT. I look back with gratitude over these years and recognize what the university has done for me. First, UCT opened the door to opportunity. I was not a particularly diligent schoolboy and just scraped through the matriculation exam. But UCT gave me a chance and admitted me to the undergraduate program in sociology and social work. Second, UCT gave me my first academic appointment and launched my career. After I completed my master's degree, I was appointed to a lectureship in sociology where I learned all about the joys and stresses of academic life. Soon afterwards, I was awarded the university scholarship which allowed me to study at the prestigious London School of Economics. This scholarship literally changed my life. It led to an academic appointment at the LSE and to subsequent appointments in the United States, ending up here in Berkeley. Third, it was at UCT where I learned to write and think critically. Like other students, I often complained about the endless essays we were required to write, but they certainly taught me how to structure my work and how to examine different points of view and reach my own conclusions. It was also at UCT that I gained practical experience of the social problems that afflict our world. As undergraduates, we worked at different welfare agencies in Cape Town and visited many families who were struggling to make ends meet. This experience sensitized me to these issues in a very practical way and informed my writings on poverty, inequality, and social development. So I owe UCT a huge debt, and accordingly, I'd like to express my gratitude by endowing a scholarship for a postgraduate student in the social sciences, so that they too may have the opportunities that I have had. I have so many people to thank for supporting me that it would take ages to go down the list. I hope they'll excuse me if I do not mention them all by name. Nevertheless, special thanks to former colleagues at the London School of Economics, Professor David Piercho, and the late Professor Anthony Hall. Many thanks to Professor James Lee and other colleagues in Hong Kong. Thanks also to Professor Adolfo Carzola at the Polytechnic of Madrid, who translated and promoted my work in Latin America. I owe a huge debt to Professor Leila Patel of the University of Johannesburg. She established the Center for Social Development Africa, which is today internationally recognized for its work. I deeply appreciate her friendship and that of her husband, Mr. Justice Kachalia. Finally, thanks to my family for their support over the years, to my sister and brothers, niece and nephews and in-laws, and a huge thank, of course, to Khadija. Thank you so much. Members of the UCT Executive, Emeritus Professors, Professors and Fellow Academics, Graduates and the Family Members and Friends, 
Today, we have come together virtually to celebrate the more than 1,500 graduates who have completed their degree programs, and in particular, are 200 plus PhD graduates, 23 from the Faculty of Commerce, 23 from EBE, 62 in Health Sciences, 35 in Humanities, 13 in Law, and 45 in Science, and are honorary doctorates and award recipient. Each accomplishment that we acknowledge today is notable, not only because of the hard work, energy, discipline, and passion you each brought to your work, but also because of the effect your education will have on your personal future, the future of South Africa, and the world. We live in an age when we need to think beyond the boundaries of our home communities and our country and consider the effect we as Africans will have on the future of this planet. Many of you already know what researchers call the wicked problems of Africa, including poverty and inequality, sexual and gender-based violence, climate change, resource sustainability, to name just a few. These are not just African problems. They are universal, experienced by countries around the world. And their solutions will involve contributions from all around the world. Historically, the world is not in the habit of turning to Africa for solutions to global problems. I believe that that pattern is changing and you graduates will help to make that happen. I want to say a special congratulations to all of you who are graduating with PhDs. It is a massive accomplishment, something you have devoted years of hard work to achieve. Your work is an expression not only of your commitment to research, but also of your approach to creating and using knowledge that will help change how we view the world's problems, its resources, and ourselves. All of your research is needed and invaluable. I wish we had time to read out all the thesis titles because they give such a vivid picture of the many different ways these PhD graduates are contributing to African-based knowledge. But here are just a few samples. Dark matter searches with cosmic ray detectors and the square kilometer array. What lies beneath the complex nature of appointing women judges in Zambia and South Africa? The information seeking process of blind and visually impaired grade 12 learners in selected South African schools for the blind. Television truth commissions, the interaction between television perpetrators and political transition in South Africa. Measuring tackle and rug technique in rugby union. Identifying female mobile bully victim characteristics in selected high schools in South Africa towards an anti-bullying mobile application. Each of you, new doctoral graduates, has worked day and night to prove the value of African-based research and to contribute to the Global Knowledge Bank. You are leaving proof of UCT's mission to be the best for this continent in research that makes a difference in people's lives. Thank you for keeping the African light shining bright. I know many of you think of 2020 as a year of frustration and disappointment. It has certainly not turned out to be any way as, ex as we expected. The natural human response to the year we are having is to think, I cannot wait for things to get back to normal. But I have a different hope for you as graduates and new thought leaders. I hope you use your experience of this year to take us not back to normal, but to a new level altogether. After all, what is normal in much of Africa? Poverty, inequality, lack of jobs, lack of hope. None of us want that kind of normal. Instead, I challenge each of you to look around your communities, to look at the work of what profession you will enter and to start to think of what the new normal should be. And I challenge each of you to have the courage to experiment, to think differently and to act on those ideas. And here's a new idea I would like to introduce to you. Graduation is a ceremony to celebrate accomplishment and what you have accomplished is wonderful. But I challenge each of you to think back to the mistakes you made in your university career, the obstacles you had to overcome, things that disappointed you, because those mistakes and obstacles and disappointments were part of the road that got you to graduation. Every one of us 
has experienced failure and disappointments, and we have grown through them. In fact, we may even see how our successes were made possible because of our failures. I can tell you that in my career, I followed a road that led me through many disappointments, disillusionments, wrong turnings and mistakes, as well as achievements, flashes of insights and opportunities and rewards. Nassim Nicholas Taleb talks about the power of failure in his book entitled Anti-Fragile, Things That Gain From Disorder. While resilience is the ability to resist shocks and remain the same, anti-fragility is the ability to grow stronger and even thrive as a result of shock, stress, and disorder. Anti-fragility teaches us to value and use the friction of crisis and challenge because that is where we can grow. This also applies to how we learn. Talib says, and I quote, the process of discovery or innovation or technological progress itself depends on anti-fragile tinkering, aggressive risk-bearing, rather than formal education, close quote. He refers to exploiting errors to make lemonade out of lemons. He points out the many great inventions that were actually the result of mistakes. The microwave oven, potato chips, post-it notes, and many others. So as you embark upon your career, you will feel the pressure to perform, to make a name for yourself. And I'm confident that you will do so. But don't let that pressure distract you from the possibility of going beyond the boundaries of what you know. The world is in a mess right now because people have done things the same way for generations. We need new young leaders with the courage to grow through the change and hard times. Because after the problem of COVID-19 has been solved, there will be many more problems waiting for the kind of creative thinking you can bring. And I'm confident that each of you can contribute to changing the world for the better. The names of the December 2020 graduates are posted on the UCT graduation webpage on UCT website. Please use hashtag UCTgrad2020 to send us your photographs and tell us how you and your family are celebrating your accomplishment and what you plan for the future. Chancellor, I call on you to admit to the degree specified the candidates to be presented. By virtue of the authority conferred upon me, I admit to the degrees specified and grant the diplomas specified on those candidates as listed on the UCT graduation page. Molueni Nongke, Kruta and Amal Vanilla. Greetings to all of you who come to celebrate this graduation. A graduation is a significant achievement. 
For some of you, the graduation comes because it is part of your family's legacy and a tradition in your family of learning. For others of you, you come, this degree is the culmination of the struggles of the proverbial village, sometimes of your entire extended family, and some deep personal struggle for you as you got to this point. Congratulations to all of you. But this degree, the achievement that you have today, marks you with the capacity to make a positive contribution in society. Make sure that your education matters. Make sure that you continue learning and this achievement marks the start of that learning. Congratulations again to all of you. Halala, abafundile. Congratulations, students. Congratulations on work really well done. I'm sure you and your families are feeling so, so excited and proud at your graduation today. And uh, we certainly, who are, we who've been part of your journey, certainly feel the same way. So I hope you're looking forward to whatever lies in your future, be it in the world of work, or hopefully even returning to us and continuing your studies. Whichever path you choose, we wish you the very best with your endeavors. And of course, remember, graduation is not the end of your journey. So, so many things to look forward to, so many lives to make a difference in, especially your own. Once again, congratulations and well done. Dear graduates, congratulations on your wonderful achievements. You have succeeded through one of the toughest years at UCT and in all of our lives. We know why we cannot be at Sarah Bartman Hall today to celebrate your graduation with you, but the challenges that you have faced this year and overcome make this graduation even more special. Let the memory of your efforts this year drive you on in the high and low moments of your careers. I am certainly very inspired by all of you. This year made it clear that what the world needs is people like you, who can think critically and with empathy, and who can take on challenges with imagination, creativity, and much resilience. To those of you who are continuing your studies with us, I look forward to welcoming you back next year. And to those of you who are spreading your wings into other meaningful and exciting ventures, I wish you all the best. Congratulations again and stay safe. Dear graduates, this year's ceremony is a unique one as we are not able to meet in person, to shake your hands and to see your happy faces as you climb onto the stage. Despite these conditions, I want to congratulate you for successfully completing your studies at UCT. We are proud of you. Today you join generations of scholars who have graduated from this university. I look forward to your contribution to society, human development and community service. I wish you well in your careers as you carry the flag of UCT alongside those of your respective countries. Well done. This is a memorable day on which you receive your degrees for which you have worked very hard. On behalf of the Faculty of Law, I wish to congratulate you and to assure you that we celebrate your success with you. Be a good ambassador for the Faculty of Law and for UCT by serving the community and society with distinction and with integrity. Wishing you greater success. Thank you. Congratulations to all the graduates and especially to our graduates from the GSB. We're all so proud of you for what you've accomplished, particularly during such a challenging year. That accomplishment comes with responsibilities. The joys, the insights, the frustrations, and even the tears from your time at UCT have shaped you into leaders who can and who must address the most challenging problems of our time. Be brave, be humble, be innovative, be audacious, but most of all, be the person whom you know you can be. The Nigerian novelist Ben Okri writes, we must look at the world with new eyes. We must look at ourselves differently. We are freer than we think. We haven't begun to live yet. The man whose light has come on in his head, his dormant sun can never be kept down or defeated. We can redream this world and make the dream real. 
I cannot wait to live in the world that reflects your dreams. Congratulations once again. This is an important day when you move from being graduands to graduates. I want to say congratulations to you all. You have earned this moment. It is a matter of pride and you should have an abiding sense of achievement. To be a graduand suggests that you are in the process of becoming, that you are about to be graduated, which is an interesting use of the passive here. To be a graduate suggests that you take on an act of exercising agency and becoming a graduate. It is also an induction, an induction into a number of really important communities. In particular, an induction into knowledge communities, communities of disciplinary practices, an induction secondly into professional communities of business, of the world of work. It is an induction thirdly into an alumni community. You are part of a great mass of University of Cape Town students who have graduated before you and with you. But it is also a community which is about entailment and entitlement. You are entitled certainly by being graduates but it also entails a great responsibility on you to develop knowledge further and to go further as graduates. Congratulations again, graduates and your mentors, lecturers, parents and family. You are African graduates and you are South African graduates. Congratulations on your graduation. What a fabulous achievement and something that you can be very proud of, especially considering that you are UCT's first COVID graduates and that you've survived the roller coaster of 2020 to get here today. You have a remarkable professional qualification that can take you traveling, earn you lots of money and enable you to have a substantial impact on society. My invitation and challenge to you is to use it wisely Ensure that when you come back to UCT one day to talk to our EBE students about your brilliant career, you can say, I have made a difference in this world that I am proud of. I'm honoured to commend you today. You've earned this moment and I hope that you celebrate with gusto. Congratulations. Let the rain fall on the shoulders of those who bear the weight of their rural dreams. Those who are trees planted here to bloom under the sun of knowledge. Those of you we know who are named first and last. We see your people in you. We see how they see themselves in you. We see how you walk under the shadow of a hope that is greater than your own. You whose names are first and last, today you exchange the robe of responsibility for a cap and a gown and a piece of paper that has guided you like a map. But today it becomes a chart to mark the path for the many feet that will follow in your footsteps, dressed in nothing but their dreams and calling themselves by your story. To those of you who will yield a degree and diploma like a spade to break ground in stubborn places and to rebuild what has been broken, those of you whose very presence will demand inclusivity in their disciplines, who will teach old tongues how to pronounce their names, and to those of you who are fattened by knowledge, who can graze a book day and night and chew its cud to teach young stomachs how to digest it. 
Those of you whose graduation is the writing of someone else's story because your heart calls for a different calling, Makututume. And those of you who have felt the bite of circumstance, who know that their best efforts have been shredded between the teeth of mental health, Ditikuni Makututume. Kuni nonke, siyazingangani, siti halala kuni, mamelanike. Zeni tlakule, ni lime, ni vune, ni peke, ni pake, ni pake li siswe sonke, ukuze sike sikute, tili kwebange li ti, kum, kum, makututu, me! When we entered 2020, we never could have imagined the rapid change and uncertainty that awaited us. Coming together for this virtual graduation should not dampen your spirit or undermine your academic achievements. This remains a profound moment, and we're here to celebrate the years of dedicated hard work, sacrifice, and discipline that each of you have shown in order to reach this high point in your journey. Each of the graduates here today has overcome the obstacles that COVID-19 has thrown in your path. As you enter into a world that is currently marred by instability, we are looking forward to helping you steer necessary change through the work you will embark upon after your graduation. This year, UCT is also awarding an honorary doctorate in literature to Professor James Midley, who is regarded as a pioneer in the field of international social work and social policy in the developing world. His studies have informed our views of the community development and of the widening poverty and inequality around the world. Underpinning our collective quest for socioeconomic development and shared prosperity is a quest for truth. We rely on the academy to guide our action and to help us objectively understand ourselves and the world around us. In breaking down what is complex and difficult to measure, Prof Migli is able to enlighten pathways towards a global progress that we can all follow. In looking forward towards this path of development, there are values as leaders we must embody in order to enable change we want to see. And these values of courage, compassion, creativity, curiosity, collaboration, and optimism are what we hope every UCT graduate will embody throughout life. When one considers the greatest leaders of our time and of the past, we see their passion for the advancement of humanity as the force that drove them to their success. Often the greatest leaders come from humble beginnings and we learn from them that by drawing from the challenges we have overcome, we're able to help others escape similar suffering. This is the compassion and humaneness that drives every generation. Even though each one of us has different definitions of what it means to get to the top, you are part of a generation that will help to rebuild what has been shaken loose in our society by COVID-19 and the many complex challenges we all face today, including climate change, gender-biased violence, unemployment, to name just a few. You have an opportunity to leverage your knowledge as well as the fourth industrial revolution to solve these challenges and to ensure that no one gets left behind. This is both a privilege and a responsibility. I encourage you to grasp every opportunity to learn more about yourselves and your world, to explore ways that you can make a difference and to connect with others with similar ideals. COVID-19 may have robbed you of your graduation ceremony, but it can never take away your education. So congratulations, the future is yours to build. Malaika, 
virtue of the authority conferred upon me, I hereby dissolve this congregation of the University of Cape Town. <laughs>